learning curves in microsurgery. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mukhtar, for uh, having me here. It's great to be here. So I'm um, just uh, following up on what Dr. Al Rashid and Dr. Salva have been talking about. Um, I'm just going to share our experience in um, and our, in our experience in developing a curriculum for microsurgery training and education, and how uh, what we have developed so far can apply to training in robotic microsurgery. So just a bit of background, um, I'm from Singapore, I'm a plastic surgeon, I went to London a few years ago to do my masters and that's where I started some work on um, education in microsurgery with uh, Professor Myers, Dr. Garnham and through them I met uh, Yelena, Dr. Sijo, who connected us all the way to MD Anderson and Dr. Salver. So um, since then we have all been sort of working on this competency-based microsurgical training curriculum. And to start off with, um, as mentioned before, we had to look at uh, optimizing assessment tools uh, and then using this to identify cohort-specific learning curves, correlating this with clinical outcomes, and then the end point would be to define clinical safety thresholds and then develop a full-scale curriculum. So to start off with um, uh, objective, uh, or to, or to start off with developing objective assessment tools, we had to look at the tools that were already out there. And of all the tools, which include things like cadency rate, uh, the one that we found that was most readily available and easily adaptable is what uh, Dr. Al Rashid talked about earlier, which is the global rating scale. And we just looked at all the global rating scales that were currently published in the literature at that time. And we looked at it critically, analyzed it, and we saw how we could optimize it and improve it. And after the meeting in Naples last year, we had a consensus and we developed a IMSS, which is the International Microsurgical Simulation um, Society Global Rating Scale. And we went on to validate this and compare it to other skills that had already been published. So just a summary to show that uh, it had good inter-rater reliability, uh, not much difference in terms of inter and intra-rater reliability, reliability compared to the other global rating skills in the literature. Uh, but when you look at it closely, when we um, looked at the standard deviation, which is actually the score variability, the, um, I just want to highlight to you that the scale that is more detailed, which is the IMSS scale, um, actually has higher score variabilities compared to say, another scale that is not as detailed. And um, therefore, what we concluded is that the score variability actually particularly was higher in the uh, lower stage. So it's important to have a very detailed global rating scale uh, as an objective assessment tool to identify you know, more errors and more um, uh, problems during the training process so that they can have better feedback. So then, using this, uh, the next stage would be to identify very detailed learning curves, which um, Dr. Salva has already published. Uh, he looked at his residents in uh, undergoing a microsurgical and he used the global, global rating scale. Uh, Dr. Ion Lasker has published a learning curve study, but he used cadency rate as his outcome measure. Uh, we used the IMSS uh, global rating scale. We also did a similar study looking at different cohorts, and this is just to show skill acquisition uh, that improves uh, over five sessions, but definitely a, you know, a single course will not allow you to reach the expert level. There's still quite a big difference. And then we go on to use this tool to evaluate training methods uh, like for instance, uh, uh, whether a, a very small tutor to tu student ratio is better than a high student uh, tutor to student ratio, and it shows that you know a one-to-one -one, uh, training kind of uh, model results in better skill acquisition. We looked at the number of anastomoses per course. So the higher the number of anastomoses you do per course, the better the skill acquisition. And then we looked at using this tool as a form of um, self-evaluation and uh, automated feedback, and we found that you can improve better and have a higher rate of skill acquisition if you have an auto-automated like feedback from the global rating scale. So next we went on to evaluation training stage. And um, we what we did was we had different cohorts, but uh, from three centers, uh, London, which the, the basic microsurgical course is held, uh, Naples, where there's an advanced course, and then we look, we compare them to the fellows that were undergoing microsurgery fellowship in MD Anderson. 
And what we postulated is that by the time you reach fellowship, your skill level should be much higher than someone who has just finished an advanced course. But that wasn't really the case that we found. So it's likely that um, after an advanced course during a residency program that uh, the trainees are not able to keep up with their microsurgical skills enough. And therefore, this uh, highlights the importance of deliberate practice to prevent skill loss. And all of this needs to be included in a curriculum for microsurgery. So what's next? As we mentioned before, um, everything we talk about here, a lot of it would be about what we can do in the future. So we have to translate all what, whatever we have learned in developing a microsurgical curriculum to robotic microsurgery training. And Dr. Al Rashid has um, taken the first step. She's developed and optimized a tool. She has validated it. So today, this is where we are when it comes to a robotic microsurgery curriculum. We've done thorough analysis of the skills. We validated a tool that can assess it objectively, and probably the next stage would be to identify a very detailed uh, and specific learning curve and correlate this with clinical outcomes so that you can identify safety, uh, safe clinical thresholds, and then subsequently have a very good curriculum for robotic microsurgery training. So I just want to thank all the people that I have worked with uh, for all this research and acknowledge them in this presentation. Thank you.